When I was twelve, my father gave my sister and I a pair of rings. Four metal circles. Family history interwoven in an intricate puzzle, hammered silver and smooth. I wore it every day until it practically became a part of me. Except for one thing. Whenever the ring fell apart, I could never figure out how to piece it together again. My father, an archive of memory and puzzle pieces. As the years wore on and I grew older, I realized I would have to learn the steps of assembly myself. When I returned home, he told me a story. I think we had no idea that anything was about to happen, otherwise I never would have been sent to school. At some point during the day, either around noon or shortly after, we heard that there were problems, that there were riots. Towards the end of the day, we could see columns of smoke in different directions. We heard that they had burned some gas stations or something like that. And when it came time to leave school, we were told that the buses weren't leaving. But at some point, they decided that it was now or never. And anybody who had blonde hair was going to be given a jacket with a hood so that they could cover up their blonde hair just in case they were seen. <laughs> Even though I was an indestructible 15-year-old, I did not poke my head up into the window to see what was going on. I think it's safe to say that at that point, I was definitely afraid. Living in Tehran was unlike anything that I had experienced up until that point, having grown up in Los Angeles. I remember lots of traffic. I remember the Paycons. I remember seeing a couple of guys riding like a Vespa, one guy sitting facing backwards on the back, carrying these loaves of bread. My father was a manager of international programs for Lytton Guidance and Control Systems, and they provided inertial guidance systems for fighter jets. So he worked as a contractor for the Imperial Iranian Air Force. I went to the community school in Tehran, which was one of only a couple of English-speaking schools. We were supposed to be there for two years. It didn't work out that way. I had no idea why the riots happened when they did. The fact that my school was in Tehran was kind of a black box. It could have been in Los Angeles. I went to school. I was instructed in English. Most of the people around me were European and I was having trouble with chemistry and math was hard and there were all these other things that I was concerned about more than civil unrest. I do think that the day of the riots and the bus ride home scared me, you know, for my life for the first time. The descent cuts right across class, religious and political divisions. It ranges from Marxist students on the extreme left to Western-educated intellectuals and professionals in the center to religious conformists on the far right. Uh, we were university students, and those days, in 1979, these demonstrations often and invariably uh, descended into running battles with the uh, army soldiers who were in charge of maintaining the security, and they used to shoot in the air and occasionally, very occasionally, into the crowds. We wanted democracy, and, and the revolution was promising that. They share a bitter frustration over the failure of many of the Shah's economic programs, the rising inflation brought on by oil wealth, the denial of civil and political rights, and many years of what they say has been repressive rule. Did you know that the Iranian regime was corrupt at the time? Oh yeah, yeah. sure. Yes, it, was, it never worked right. I always went down to the embassy. The embassy was located right near the uh, airport. And I'd go down there every, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, for this so-called briefing by the uh, Iranians. Well, they didn't have a clue what they were doing. The whole place was falling apart, and I had to figure out how to get myself out of there, plus my family, plus the dog. We had to get up really early, about 2 a.m. or so, to 
pile into the car with all of our luggage and the dog and drive to the airport in darkness we flew out no problem but my dad did stay behind for about two more months the thing was i was trapped i couldn't go anywhere his company would not let him leave they threatened to fire him if he left but Humini came to save me they finally understood that i was not trying to fool him so he finally left in january which is when the shah left the country Gosh, this is this is like such a this is a, a a weird feeling that I have been struggling to pin down. I have conflicting feelings about this part of our family history because I study this. The Shah was spending a lot of the government's money, um, way 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 more than he should have been on foreign weapons. And that's why all of these defense contractors were there in the first place. The Shah left the country, and with the Shah, all of the skilled foreign workers left. That is a large part of the reason that Iran has become the sort of international boogeyman that they are now. I work for the Middle East Institute. And so uh, now I do feel like I'm in a position to at least be a part of addressing and breaking down that misunderstanding that my family had a very, very small part in creating. <laughs>